We are excited to introduce to you Prophetic Ed, where we are going to be digging into the revelation of God's Word and what it looks like to walk in victory through the Word of God. Whenever God is ready to move in Scripture and bring victory to people, He always brings a fresh edge of revelation. Now, I want to encourage you as we're taking a moment to just talk about the word of God, the mind of God, and how we hear God. We're in a divine moment where God is opening doors, and we're beginning to understand that more and more. And ever since around, you know, September of last year, many in the prophetic community have been talking about the year of the open door. But I want to talk about something a little bit different. I want to talk about the fact that in this year of the open door, what did God open? Okay. You're going to hear this on some of the prophetic teachings that we still are going to be releasing over the next few uh, weeks. We're going to unpack this whole idea. But I want to talk about something you're going to hear in depth. I want to talk about protect your eyes, protect your eyes. In this year, one of the things that God revealed to us and one of the things that you're going to hear uh, unpacked in depth is this Hebrew year or this Hebrew time what it refers to that God began to show me was to understand chaff. Now, what is chaff about? Chaff is about that which irritates the eye. So I'm not going to go into the deep teaching of it because we have that in another place that you're going to hear. But I want to talk about something that you need to understand. This is a year in particular where there's going to be more irritants, more annoyances, more things that try to block your vision, stop your discernment, mess with your perception than you've ever seen before. Whenever nations are going through great transition, what happens is the only way to stop nations from moving forward with unity into a place of building better framework, better government, better abilities to create for the next generation is to create what I call a swirl of misinformation. Now, because I love history, I love history and scripture and studying great speakers, great speeches and the mind of God. I study thinkers. I study the way people form. I study how governments are made. I love this. This has been my love since I was in high school. So this is not new for me. So over 34 years of my life, I have been a student of history, one who studies those who build. When you're forming government, when you're forming thought, when you're creating laws, the thing that you have to first begin to grab a hold of is you have to look at future ramifications of current decisions. Now, in the church, we don't often think about this, but I want to talk to you just for a moment from a governmental mindset in the kingdom. When a current decision is going to affect the next 30 to 40 years, you have to be very careful about your current decisions because they are going to affect your children's children. Now, biblically, this is understood because this is kingdom thinking. Whenever God speaks to a person, we understand that God is speaking generationally because he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When God speaks to Moses or to Joshua, he always would start by saying, I am the God who. So he would refer to himself as the God of their forefathers. God would read his own resume in their presence because Israel or the Hebrews are a generational thinking people. They are a people of 50 and 100 year cycles. Now, most of the world is still like that. When you talk about Chinese culture, when you talk about Japanese culture, Mongolian culture, when you talk about English culture, when you look at European culture, when you talk about Native American culture or island culture, most other nations, except for young Western nations, think in long term effect. We think of short paydays. They think of long harvest. Now, it's important to differentiate that because for many of us, as you are going to be moving in this hour, declaring the word of God, moving with the mind of God, standing for the kingdom of God, many of us have been disqualifying the legality of our voice, 
the power of our witness and the depth of our insight because when we open our mouth, we tell the rest of the world that we only see 10 years into the future. But the rest of the world is thinking 40 to 100 years into the future. How do I know this? When you go to island nations, they are still very, very careful on what they plant in many of the islands because they're thinking about for the next 30, 40, 50 years. If we plant this crop and it's not indigenous to our people, if it is not naturally occurring here, it is going to affect us by creating different issues in the soil. It's going to take different properties from the land. It's going to affect our people by creating a different type of job, but it's going to change the jobs that have already been in existence. It's going to bring different people to live here. So that's going to change the ecosystem, the economic market. It's going to change the housing structure, which is going to affect how we build schools, what kind of schools we build. If we begin to do this, it's going to change the rainwater, the water that runs off, which is going to change the type of animals that we can have here. The plants that we plant are going to affect the plants that already exist. Now, just that statement alone, I'm just bringing it down to island culture because I'm trying to restrict you into one small thought. But if we take it even bigger, if you look at Chinese culture or Japanese culture, they can build... If you study this, a massive bridge, a skyscraper faster than anyone else in the world, and they can build a city in literally a matter of months and a couple of years because they have unlimited resources in how they have conditioned their people to work and they're designing. But this is essential. Yet they have taken the time to not let some things get into the culture because they have the mindset of we must protect what is our culture and we don't want to let some things in. This is what we discover when you look at time. Most nations did not let in other nations to bring in their culture because they said we have to be careful how we're going to affect the current culture because too much other influences, too many other stimuli, too many other things added into what we already have is going to overwhelm, change, transform, and we will not be who we are in 50 to 100 years because we have not built good ideas, good fences, or good mindsets. Now, hear what I'm saying. I'm not even talking about natural nations right now. I want us to think now. So when we stand up and we begin to speak that we're telling people who God is and what God can do and how God can transform their mind, their nation, their mindset, their family. Most of us have lost our ability to speak into the rest of the nations because when most of us in America, our faith only sees. I'm talking about mindsets that now affect spirituality. So because we've been conditioned to only think five to 10 years, we take a job and we don't think about how it will affect the next 40 years of our family. We don't think about how it is it good for my children and my grandchildren. All we think about is how much money can I make in the next five years? When we're moving somewhere, we're not thinking about what kind of community we're going to be into because most people in other parts of the world, when they move somewhere, they're thinking, this is where I want to be. Is this good for me to raise my children here? And would my children want to raise their children nearby or in a similar culture so that we are part of a culture, part of a climate, part of a landscape, and we can add to over the next 20 to 40 years this place we live and not take from. We don't think that way most of the time in the West. We're simply thinking about, I'm going to move into this house and I'm, this is good. And after four or five years, I'm going to sell this house. Or after seven, eight years, I'm going to find a way to make money off this house. Now, all of that's good. I love understanding real estate and moving in it. But for most of us, what it means for most of us is we are rootless. Now, when you are moving in the spirit and you don't understand root, you don't understand foundation, and if you don't understand legacy, that means everything you speak is going to be based off what you can perceive to be valuable in a five-year period, and at most a 10-year cycle. Why am I saying this? That is why, for most of us, we don't have a mindset for how to change a nation. We don't really have a governmental dream of how to shift this country into righteousness or Western countries. 
We don't even have a dream as to what righteousness would look like. So whoever has the loudest voice in our political system, whoever is speaking to the current wound in our psyche or the current bleed in our economy, we run to that side because we're only thinking of five to 10 years. We look at what's affected my money for the last one or two years. Instead of other nations begin to go, wait, let's look at this from a 40 year cycle, a 80 year cycle. Yes, this might be bad, but we can see through history that every 20, 30 years, this is going to be the circuit of this nation, the cycle of this people. So if we ride it out with our leaders in three to four years, this will auto correct anyway. So let's not live out of debt, let's live based on what we can produce and ride out the cycle rather than jump ship and look for something every three to four years. Why? Because we're creating waves that we don't understand how to stop. So there'll never be peace on the face of the water because we've never given the water time to settle. We'll never have an idea of how to bring revival to a city when we haven't yet decided to dwell in that city. Because when people go to a city, God would command them, here, marry children, here, build vineyards, here, build homes. Why? You have to stabilize the culture before you can change the culture so that you can invade the culture. I'm saying this not to say that you need to live in the place that you've been. I'm saying this not to say that you are thinking incorrectly about nations or international issues. I'm saying it just to say, would you just weigh the option that maybe, just maybe, we've been conditioned to think so short that we don't have long-term answers. We've been conditioned to think so small that we don't have big-time solutions. And because we're thinking American, and I am an American and I love my country, but for many of us, because we're thinking American, when it comes to you taking the gospel to the rest of the world, the reason they may not receive your approach and they don't pay attention to your voice is because you're bringing an American solution to a long-term international issue that is longer than the history of this nation. That sometimes what the world is going through, they've been wrestling with it longer than your grandparents and your parents were in the earth. So the word has long-term solutions. So we've got to get the mind of God. So in this year, I want to say to many of you, get the chaff, get the irritants out of your eyes. Stop letting all your solutions, stop letting all your prayers, stop letting all your prophecies be filled with five and 10 year information. Stop standing up to speak and prophesy based on who's going to be in the White House or what's going to happen with the economy over the next five years. That's short thinking. That's small thinking. It is necessary for us to solve those solutions, but don't put God's name on something that only has a five-year model. God doesn't even think in five-year plans. God is a 50-year mindset. He is a God of generations. So we now as leaders have to start thinking generationally, and that is not comfortable because because it means you've got to say to some people, no, God's not going to get you out of this right now. Why? Because we took 20 years to get into the middle of a mess. God's not going to rescue you in two years just because you prophesy it. We have to create better solutions. We have to create better mindsets. We have to create better systems. And we need some prophets and teachers who understand that or we are still part of a problem we were sent to solve. We're part of a issue we were sent to change and we can't transform the world when we don't even understand how the world works. I pray that this stirs you to look at solutions, study history, pray, look in the word. Daniel thought about solutions. Joseph brought solutions. Deborah and Barak brought solutions. When God raised up the judges, they each brought peace for 20 to 40 years. That's generational peace. We need to be thinking in terms that bring solutions that affect generations and not prophecies and words and arguments that are only good for the next four to seven years. Somebody please go on your knees, 
open up your Bible and study history and ask God, give me answers that change my generation. Give me solutions that my grandchildren and great grandchildren can be blessed by and help me become a voice of change, not just a voice that argues. May the Lord anoint your ears to hear. May you see beyond what's currently being put in front of you and see into the heart of God, the mind of God and the solutions of God. May you become a thinker of solutions, a dreamer of systems, a maker of models. And may God use you like Daniel, like David, like Joshua to bring forth ideas, instruments and new mindsets that people may reap the benefit of your wisdom eat the fruit of your labors and be changed because you were willing to think outside the box and build what's never been seen in the earth. The Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. This has been Prophetic Edge with Michael Dalton. If this episode has blessed you, please consider sharing it with someone. For more information, ministry dates, and to sow into the ministry, please visit yes-ministries.com. 